I had loads of friends. I was very good at sport. I was very strict. I had three years plans and five years plans, and I stuck to those. My commute to the office was six hours, so I had plenty of time to, to think. I realized that I was an alcoholic, and I was denying it. I stopped drinking on that day, and I've been sober for five years. Hello and welcome to another edition of my story and today we have a real treat in store because we have Carsten Johnson with us and Carsten is a new friend of ours and he's a mighty man of God. So Carsten, welcome. Thank you very much. It's such a pleasure being here. It's great. Now what we want to know is how God's worked in your life. So let's start at the beginning and tell us about your childhood and your family life. As you can tell from the accent, I am not from the UK. So I was born in Denmark in Copenhagen and I grew up there uh, until I was in my mid-twenties oh. when I realised that I had to go out and see the world. The first uh, move I made was actually coming to the UK, living in Stoke-on-Trent, working there. Um, and after many years uh, finding my wife here, we had our children, uh, we decided that it was time to move on. So we went back to Denmark for nine years mm -hmm. and from Denmark we went to the US and was there for eight years. Was that with your job? That was all job related. Yes. So one part of me was uh, when we moved to Denmark, it was uh, for a job opportunity for me. Yes. And when we moved to the US, it was an opportunity for Yvonne. How interesting. Yes, so you were able to operate from the US as well? Correct, yeah. So, uh, but we, we needed to get back, uh, back to the UK and uh, it's just so nice to be back again. Mm -hmm. And even better that uh, when we returned, I, by a coincidence, came across New Life Church. And who would have known that we were having lunch with you uh, the same day and uh, gosh, that, that just got everything started. Yes, well there you are, you see, you always make people welcome when they come into your church. That is so important and it's a big thing in David and my life. So Carsten, what was it like growing up in Copenhagen? Tell us about your school. My background is actually like uh, we, we didn't have a lot of money. Growing up here, I had some family issues at that time uh, with uh, my dad being an alcoholic. Going to school, I had loads of friends. I was very good at sport. But uh, on the academic side there, I was, in those days, I would say hopeless. I'm uh -huh. not hopeless. But um, just going through school at that time um, and, and just being, you know, by the end of all, most of the time, I was actually told that I was stupid. Were you? And, yeah, well, by and, your teachers? Yeah, and, and uh, I remember one meeting with uh, my parents and a teacher, and we were talking about this thing, and they were just talking amongst themselves, and they agreed I should do something my, with my hands. And um, that uh, upset me a little bit, but it yeah. also made me determined to show them that I was not stupid. Yes. So, um, so leaving school, and, and the thing is that you, you know, I kept on telling myself I was stupid. So I left school without any grades and stuff like mm. that, and uh, went straight in as an apprentice. Apprentice for what? Uh, uh, radio and TV. Oh, in really? those days, there were small shops selling all yes, these things there. Right. I learned my trade there. Working in a shop was not really me. Hence, I started to plan and see how I could move on with my life. Yes. If you told yourself you were stupid and people told you were stupid, at what point in your life did you get out of that? Well, you see, what happened was that um, during my apprenticeship, we had to go to a business school. Oh. And uh, I found that so interesting. And the teachers were inspiring. They believed in me. They never said that I was stupid. Okay. And interesting enough, after two and a half years, I came out with the top grades in the whole of Denmark uh, for, for, you know, at that business school here. And uh, lo and behold, uh, I was actually giving a grant from, from Chubal. So there was 40 girls and 40 boys that were sent to England <laughs> uh, right. And that was my first time really going abroad in, in that way there, but also seeing England. And I remember sitting on a, on a bus going through Chester and I told myself, I'm going to live here. Um, so, so that was the first, first step there. It, it took a few years to get here, but, but that was the, the, you know, 
that was just so awesome to see how it worked. Yes. Yeah. So how did your career go on from there, Carsten? I was determined to succeed uh, in something uh, to prove that I was not stupid. I was very strict. I had three years plans and five years plans, and I stuck to those. So one thing was, first of all, to get some sort of educational background. Yes. So I went to evening school for six years, nonstop, two, day, two nights a, a week. Uh, to prepare myself to get onto uh, to university. There was just something happening in between here where I suddenly realized that I had found a place that I had to work. Uh, it was so inspiring. I saw the first computer there and I thought, I'm going to work here. So that's how it, it works. Um, but finding out how to get a job there, mm. I, I studied them and I knew, found out that 80% of what they did was export. So I quit my sales job and went to a, a, the Danish School for International uh, Marketing and Export. Uh, two years there, and by the end of it, I wrote to Sven Olsen, the owner of the company, and said, you know, I'm here, um, I'm very excited, can I do anything for my final project? And lo and behold, he actually says, yeah. Oh, wow. So I did a project for, for Soko System, uh, the company I worked for, mm. and um, I just, the difference was that, um, you know, doing a project, you might be in every now and again. I was there at eight o'clock every morning yes. and with my tie on, sat there, participated in everything. And I did that for, for the three months that went during the project. Sven Olsen said, well, do you want a job? And yeah, that was, that was the beginning for me because the first thing that happened was that he said, could you go to the UK for three weeks? Uh, and that ended up being 15 years instead. <laughs> Excellent. So you've really worked yourself so that you now know that you have a career, you have education. It's amazing. Just a yeah. late developer, I would say, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah I think uh, I was my own worst enemy. Yes. Telling me that I was, you know, myself, that I was stupid. Yeah. Also, during my upbringing, uh, and it's, I had a good, stable upbringing here, yes. but there were some, some things that happened in my life where uh, I came out with uh, really low self-esteem. Yes. Uh, one of the most common words I would say was hopeless. Yes. Uh, so I started out with stupid, hopeless, fat. Uh, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. Were you really fat? Uh, now you look at yourself. Well, now? that's the thing is when you look at, uh, you know, when you look at through my own eyes like that, you know, I was like, like horrible. And of course I'm not. But that's later on that God of showed course. me, showed me that bit here. So, yeah. Yes. Well, let's go to you. God showed you. Tell us how you found Jesus. Yes. So, you see, in Denmark, uh, it's, uh, there's not a lot of Christianity there. Mm. It's less than 2% of right. the population that actually go to church. Yeah. The yeah. only time I heard about God was when, when my, my dad was cracking a joke about it. So, ah, so that's all I, right. I knew about it. Yes. Uh, I could never imagine myself you know, being a Christian. I never ever got to touch uh, anything about religion or know about the Bible at all. So I went through life like that. So in theory, what, what the way I developed was that, and I remember the first sales training book I read, and uh, there was two points I got out of that. So uh, you're born alone, you go through life alone, and you die alone. And the other bit was don't eat butter. I, I don't know why that came out of, <laughs> of that book. Uh, but you see, I adopted that philosophy. I was, I was alone all the way, and uh, I had to be my own God. Yes, yes. Which was like, uh, of course, a, a disaster. But, yes. but that's how I went through my life. Mm. I know there was something there, but I, I, I would never put it towards like Christian life. Um, but I, I went through it. I, I had a, a, you know, a, a successful career. Uh, but during that time, I developed, uh, you know, I was, I was becoming an al alcoholic. And um, that brought me into deep depressions. Uh, I wanted to end my life for so many years. I thought that was just the way it was. But um, we, we were in the US, we just moved to the US, and uh, we were invited by a lovely couple, and now very good friends of us, to a, as they call it in the US, a grill. And uh, it was so nice. But what happened there was we were sitting around the table, and Chris Pierce, a, a truly a godly man, actually prayed. I have never heard anyone praying. And I was just like, wow, 
And I could see my boys were looking at me and said, you've got to crack a d- joke about me now. <laughs> but I was just crying and I, I was listening to how grateful they were. And, and, and it was not just words, it was, it was, it was there. Yeah. And, uh, so, um, well, I, I went like, wow, I want that. So uh, afterwards, I, I just, just briefly spoke to Chris and says, what's this all about? And he just mentioned that he was going to a church called Westwood. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we didn't talk about it. Coming back that evening there, I googled Westwood. And lo and behold, two days later, they were starting an Alpha course. Ah. And um, I must admit, I was still very critical. Mm-hmm. You see, uh, this is all about ignorance, but also the way that most Danes look at that is that um, they're going to brainwash you and they're going to take all your money. Oh, right. So that was my approach to yes, Alpha course, yes. very, very critical. But, I mean, that changed right away. I mean, there were some things that just, you know, kept on going. I was, my barrier came down. I was not, not a Christian yet. But I remember after one Alpha course, so we, I think we were two months in there, sitting in my car driving back. And suddenly I felt this love, unbelievable. It was just, you know, it was not human love. It was just that amazing love. And yes. I thought, whoa, what is this? And then I, I just kept on coming back. I had so many questions. And I remember uh, that was actually after the Alpha course was finished. I was, we were sitting around a dinner table with the family and I told them that I'd become a Christian. And then it was all quiet. What? And then my, one of my boys, Sam, looked at me and says, Dad, you're not going off the rails now, are you? And I didn't know what to say, but that was really the start of it and uh, it was a long journey because i was still i still got the alcohol in my life i still have severe depressions Mm. i still had this just the urge to end it and get peace and quiet Um, but but during that journey was was really amazing because first of all i get i changed my friend all my friends to people within the church Right. They were so supportive. I had a, an amazing godly man, mm. uh, Kent, uh, in, in, the, in the U.S., and he was my spiritual mentor. Kent was so patient. He just kept, you know, I had so many questions, and he just answered them and nice in such a good way and gave me some more bits about, you know, how the uh, Holy Spirit works and what. But I, I just went, wow, wow. And I remember he, he lent me a book uh, in the early days, and uh, he says, try to read that. And I was trying to read it. Next Friday, I came back and says, I have to give this one back to you because there's too much blood in this book. Uh, really? Oh, how interesting. Not knowing this yeah. thing here. But what's so funny now is that that book is by my bedside table all yes. the time. And what uh, is the book? It's called Normal Christian Life. Ah, yes. And it's, it's awesome. I mean, yes. the, the, it, all, it tells about the power there is in Jesus and, and, and following Jesus. So, yes. But it, it just shows that the, my journey there was, mm. uh, was really, uh, it was long. So I think it's really good to have somebody in your life who can mentor you and can answer your questions. But, exactly. Yeah. And um, I, I know for a fact, if I hadn't had Kent there with his patient uh, yes. with me and answering questions, I would not sit here as a completely changed man. Mm. So, as God grabbed a hold of your life, did you begin to change from this self-image that you had and the depression and everything? Tell us how that went. Yeah, the first thing uh, was finding out about the love, the amazing love mm. that is from God. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Right. And that started to, to make me think a bit. I was still in with the alcohol. I still had my depressions and all that stuff. Yes. There. And it was only... A, couple of years later where it just and, and this was God, God's work I realized that I was an alcoholic and I was denying it and right. um, I needed help so I went to like an outpatient uh, where you got a lot of good tools to work with um, but it was non-Christian you, you know never mentioned anything about a, a higher spirit or anything for yeah. me it was God yeah. and I remember just Going back from the office once, uh, my commute to the office was six hours, so I had plenty of time to, to think. Um, and then it just, it all came to me at that time. And I, I realized that, you know, I was made in God's image. Yes. So instead of being 
stupid, hopeless and stuff like that. I looked at myself suddenly through God's eye and I realized I was a masterpiece. I mean, you're a masterpiece. You guys out there are masterpieces. Yes. And um, I remember that day so clearly because when I got back home, I was on my knees and I apologized to God for criticizing his work Interesting. for so many years. Yes. I mean, I wanted to end it, end the masterpiece. Uh, I was criticizing, fat, stupid. I was criticizing his work. And, um, and I just fell to my knees and I asked for forgiveness. Mm. And um, it felt like he was just was there. And it was just amazing. And you see, from then on, I looked at myself, not through the, the eyes of the world, but through the eyes of God. Yes. And wow, I'm That's amazing. That's a real revelation. Exactly. You see, what happened here was I had God's love. I actually loved myself now. And uh, I knew everything was possible because I was an amazing person. Yes. And that changed my life. And I remember going back to this outpatient Thing. And uh, I, I remember coming into this meeting and they all looked at me and says, what's happened, Carsten? Uh, what's <laughs> happened? And uh, although I was not allowed to, he says, I've got it. I have got it now. And uh, I said, this is God. It's all about God. And I explained to them this thing about my perception of myself. Yes. The, the love that I was craving for everyone else that they could never fulfill my, my, mm, my needs. For how it. true. God yeah. went straight in and did it. Yeah. So that changed my life. Yes. I stopped drinking on that day and I've been sober for five years. Um, so it's, it's been a, an amazing journey. Yes. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. So what did your family think about this? Did they see the change? Uh, they saw the change in me because being alcoholic, uh, it, uh, you do hurt a lot of people, uh, yes. especially when you come out of it and you look back and you think, God, I've hurt so many people. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the things I had to look at. Uh, my wife saw it immediately because I changed. I, I was, uh, my depressions, they're still there, uh, but they're not anywhere near as bad as they Good. used to be. Yeah. And my wife could see the change. Mm. And it was just wonderful. Yeah. I, I went through a process where we, um, I, was, I was actually following um, 12 steps, but they're Christian steps, not, not the AA. And there's nothing wrong with the AA, no, no. Uh, but, but uh, I needed to be more biblical based, yes. God based. Yeah. So I went through that. And uh, one of the things is that you really have to own up to what you've done to people. Mm. And you have to apologize and ask for forgiveness. Yeah. Before you've been forgiven, you can't move on. And I think that was a big thing for me is about, I'm forgiven. My wife, I don't know how she did it, but she, she, she stood by my side and forgot, forgave me here. So yeah. that was amazing. It really ended up with, uh, I was getting close to 60. That, that's, um, and I was, uh, we just moved into a little, lovely little home in, in Minneapolis. Uh, the boys had left home yeah. and I was sitting there and I was connecting the dots. You know, the, these, uh, uh, the, pictures you get where you go from number one, two, oh, three. Yes, the dot books, yes. I was starting to connect the dots. Yes. A lot of those dots were not initially God's involvement. Yeah. But when I, once I did that, I started to get a picture. And suddenly I look back and say one to two, wow. Two to three, wow. And then on and on I just got, wow, wow, wow. This is God. Yes. Um, and at that point, once I got the picture and I, I, I just felt the love of God and, and it was a new life. I, was being give, I had been given a new heart, yes. which was just, on, you know, I couldn't That's understand That's very scriptural. Yes. And, and I must confess that, um, you know, this thing about getting a new heart, I did go back a couple of times and says, Lord, can I have a new heart again? Because I think I missed this one up. <laughs> but the beautiful thing of this is this heart will always be new. And you don't have to change it. You just have to follow your heart instead. Yes. And yes. that's what I did. Time in my chair looking out, I realized that this was just amazing. Mm. And I decided to really give the rest of my life to glorify God for what he's done. To show people that even if you are close to 60, uh, you know, 
you've you still got issues and stuff like that. Yes. God can change your life. Yes. There's some pivotal points that once you get that right, not just read about it, but really understand mm. it, it changes your life completely. Yes. So this is what I'm doing right now is um, I'm just sharing my journey with people. Good. Um, yeah. And I'm working very much into with uh, mental health, yeah. not deep, deep, but, but how God can handle help yes. you with this. Mm -hmm. And and also uh, we are in the process of, of starting a group called Celebrate Recovery. So most of us have, have got hurts uh, and hang-ups uh, and some of us develop a habit from that. This is yes. typical. The, I, I, during my childhood, I had some sort of a hurt. I got the hang-ups, self-esteem, self-loathing. I couldn't stand my own company. Yes. And I hang, yeah. uh, my habits was turned into alcohol. Um, yeah. And a lot of people have been hurt, they got their hang-ups, they don't necessarily have to have a habit, but these are areas where we can create a safe place within Celebrate Recovery, where yes. people can come, we can share things, we can learn things, so just, just be really together as a family and that's... Mm. You'll all grow through it as well and find <laughs> new ways that God's going to touch your yeah, life. Exactly. You? And, and one of the things is that when I speak to some of my Danish friends now and t talk about Christianity, they said, oh, I can't be a Christian because, again, ignorance think that you have to be perfect. Oh, I know. And then the next question is like, well, what, where is God when all this is happening in the world and with you? And says, no, no, this is the other way around. That's why we need Jesus. Exactly. Yes really dwell on the words from from the bible mm. and work with ourselves so so yeah that's and this is amazing once it's not easy for people to understand but once they get a taste of it yes it's amazing to see the difference in people's life yes it certainly is so Carsten, how has your christian faith affected your business life it's affected me a lot in a good way because mm. during my i still work in the u.s but during my travels now and i was so blessed to actually get a sales rep in that i couldn't ask about that in an interview but later on i found out he was a christian oh. so our travels have also been like uh, we went to the ark in in tennessee to see that it's a full-size scale of the ark and it's telling a little bit about the practical things and how the different species were there because I was like, I was avoiding that, that bit because I, I couldn't make sense of it. Uh, and there was so much information. And, yes. and the beautiful thing is, uh, you know, working with Will, which is he's also a godly man, talking to him about it was just amazing. We were working in North Carolina and uh, we managed to see Billy Graham's library. Oh, really? Again, sharing that with Will was amazing. He's, he's really, truly a, mm. a wonderful man to work with. So, so these are the amazing things. I've seen some of the mega churches in, in the US. I've mm. seen some really small churches. Yeah. Uh, and, and whenever I can, I would go to a service in these different places. So that's the blessing. The other thing that was very important is that once I really understood what it's all about, and I made that clear to my team, is that our values are the Christian values. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's a clear reference to it. Uh, you cannot go wrong following those values. It will actually make you grow and, yes. and feel better in your work mm. here. So, so that's how Christianity have influenced my, my work side of it. So what would you say are the parts of scripture that have meant a lot to you in your own Christian life? I think the most important thing for me was actually in the beginning of my journey. Um, what, what most of us will find at some point is that we, uh, we will have spiritual warfare. Yes. There'll be doubt, there'll be questions, and uh, that's uh, really hard, especially if you are new. They are the, uh, mm. you know, it's really, really hard. Yes. And one thing I came, uh, th that really came to me was Ephesians, uh, where the uh, talking about the armor of God. Yes. And I just, when I read that, it just clicked. So I put that verse up on my the mirror in our bathroom. So every morning I woke up. I would see that. And it's all about pre preparing myself for the day. Yes. This yeah. thing about salvation, the, the belt of truth, yes. uh, amazing, and, and all these things. So I was actually putting God's armor on every morning. Also, as reminders, I had like a, a little statue in my office and stuff like that. But that, every time I was struggling and stuff like that, I went back to the armor of God. Yes. Says, yeah. 
And I learned so much from it because initially I saw the armor of God as being defensive. Uh -huh. But later on in, in my journey, I actually realized that it could also, in a positive way, be offensive. Yes, absolutely. Use the sword, use yeah. the sandals, yes. everything that you can use there and go out there and share that with people. Yes. So uh, the transformation has been amazing and it's still the most important part of the Bible for me. Yes, yeah. yes, that's lovely. Yeah, so it's really made a difference to your whole person, hasn't it, to come to know Jesus? It's transformed me completely and, yeah. and hands are, are hard. I would not be sitting here today. I would not have been alive. Mm. Um, it's, it's, uh, I can't thank God enough for this yeah. bit here. Uh, it was just a shame that I didn't open my heart earlier, but that was ignorance uh, where I grew up and stuff like that. So I, I just pray that people will be able to find it quick, uh, sooner. Yes. Yeah. And, and, the, and the thing is, with, with you know, any time, so I'm 60, I've, I've been, been a Christian for eight years now, and it's, it just shows there's hope. No matter how old you are, no matter how sort of problems you've got, it's, it's, there's hope. Yeah. There's hope in Jesus. Yes. Um, and you just have to open your heart and mm. start the journey. Find someone that can be a part of your journey. Again, I was so blessed with Kent, what he did for me. But look out for someone that can mm. do that and know there's hope. Look at me. I, I, I mean, I should be the last one to, to sit here and with hope and, and joy as I am got right now. So it's possible for everyone to do that. You may have various issues in your life and you're questioning and uh, perhaps you're feeling unworthy. But you know, the good thing is that Jesus makes us worthy. And when we come to know him, yeah. isn't it right, Christ? And he turns us up the right way again. Yeah. So let's just pray. Father, we thank you for this time with Carsten and we praise you, Lord, for all you've done in his life. And we pray now for anyone who's been touched by this message. We pray that you will bless them, that you will come to them in a new way, that you will show them that they matter so much to you, You're, that you made us in your image, Lord, and that they need the Lord Jesus Christ in their lives. And so. Just ask him in, say, Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came to die for me. Yes. We thank you that you bring new life. We pray that you'll forgive us for our sins, that you'll help us to follow you. Come in and be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's always pleasure to be here, guys. So thank you so much. That's just the way that it goes I'm a believer in Jesus For what he did on the cross I'm a believer in Jesus I've got to fight the foe I'm gonna tell of him Because he wants you to know